Hi there and welcome. Uh, this video is a very short one actually and we are just going to be looking at some of the finer points and details we need to consider when we are working with money. To be fair, if you've had a look at videos on decimals and also looking on how to multiply and divide by 100, then you have most of the skills that you need to work with money. There are just one or two little rules to be followed to make sure you get the maximum points in a test. I'll put links to some of the videos that I have in relation to these other skills at the end. Let's start then by making sure we're using the right notation, the right symbols when we are writing amounts of money. For instance, here's a simple amount, £2.50. So in this case, we have a pound sign. The two are the whole pounds, the whole number. Then we have a decimal point and the 50 pence goes on the end. Now there is another way we could write this and that would be to convert it into pence. If we did that, we would be moving the decimal point. We would be multiplying by a hundred. And in doing so, we then end up with 250 and we would put pence on the end. So it's the same amount. £2.50 is indeed 250 pence. All we have done is multiplied by a hundred. The one thing that we cannot do, and this can be marked as incorrect in exams, is to put both the pound and the pence sign at the same time. This is regarded as wrong. We either use the pound if we're going to do it in pounds or the pence if we simply have pence. OK, here are some random amounts of money. And as you can see, some of them are in pound format. Some of them are just in pence. If we are asked to add these up, of course, we need to be careful that we are using not only the right notation, but that we are also putting the numbers in the correct columns in order to add them up. So let's have a look. The first one is 56p. Well, we know that that is all pence. What you could do is write not pounds 56 to make sure that you've got everything in the right column, because when you put the two pounds 75, that needs to be there and of course the pence need to be underneath the first number. The same with the three pound and four pence. The next number is just 80. You could just write 80 or you could write 0.80 to get things in line. The next one is then 25 pounds. Again, I guess you could just write 25, but to help things along and make sure things are lined up, best to put the zeros in. And the last amount is £1.35. This way, it's simply an addition that we can do in the normal way. Now, here's another point where we need to take care, because quite often in an exam with a sum of this kind, you would be allowed a calculator. The problem is, if a calculator is used to add all these amounts up, the answer it will give you will be 33.5. So if you put the answer 33 0.5 in there, what you have done is added up the numbers, but you have not given the answer in proper money format, and you could well be marked down for that. Firstly, you need the pound sign on the beginning. 33.5 is a perfectly good decimal number, but it is not money. We are talking 33 pounds and 50 pence. So in money, the zero has to go on the end. And that covers most of the things that are specific to money itself. One thing you might want to have a look at is to make sure you have brushed up your skills on decimals and also multiplying and dividing by 100. They can be found in videos on my channel and I will put some links in the comments to those. And that's it, short and sweet. Here's a video on working with decimals. And I will, as I promised, put a couple of links in the comments at the bottom. Please subscribe if you found this useful. Thank you.